For those who watched part one of the automated job scheduling series, you will recognize this page. It displays workstations and a Gantt chart with task assignments to those workstations. Consider going back and watching part one if you haven't already. It will be informative. If you don't see the Gantt column in your view, you can right click on a column header, choose insert column, and then go down to the Gantt choice to show it on your page. To use this type of automated scheduling, you must configure resources on this page in a special way. First off, you can start by creating workstations as users with any name you like, then go down to the resource type property and set it to machine. This will differentiate it from the normal human resources that you might see on this page, such as employees who scan barcodes on the shop floor, then enter a skill. This is the purpose or kind of work performed on the machine or workstation. The standard time scheduler will look for this skill skill when assigning tasks. Create as many workstations as you like. You will not be scanning these workstation names. They are just for your visualization, just for scheduling. You may be scanning employee names that you see in this page, just not the workstation names. Now before we move on, we'll assume every workstation or machine has a skill assigned. Then switch over to the project task page and you will see three jobs that I have scheduled for the shop floor. This will be familiar from part one. Again, if you don't see the Gantt column, right click on any column header, choose insert column, and then move down to the Gantt menu choice to show it on your page. To prepare for automated task scheduling by scale, you must first create tasks with any name, and remember, employees will scan this name using barcodes or QR codes, then set it under a project or job. And again, users will be scanning this project name, so make sure you have a barcode or QR code for it. Then set the duration to the number of hours you think the task will take. You don't have to set the start, finish, or due dates because the standard time scheduler will calculate those based on these properties. The actual work will accumulate as employees scan tasks on the factory floor. The standard time scheduler will assign tasks to users, which are actually just workstations, but you need to supply a skill in order for that scheduler to find the workstations. Remember setting the skill on the workstations just moments ago? That's the reason for it. And consider setting a successor to tasks to ensure that tasks do not start before others finish. And consider setting the order as a hint to the scheduler and for displaying tasks on grids and dashboards in order. Now I set the color just for ease of identification, but this is optional. After you've finished configuring the tasks, you can right click on a job and go over to move to next time slot by skill assignment or move to front by skill assignment. These automated processes will use the skill assigned to your tasks to find workstations by that skill so that every task will be assigned to a workstation with a start date, finish date, optionally a due date. Those tasks with predecessors will be delayed until their predecessors have finished. You can see the results of the scheduler on the project task Gantt chart and user's Gantt chart. Both pages have a Gantt chart for task visualization and this is how the tasks were scheduled. You can see some are in series, some are in parallel, and you may be able to spot over and under allocation by what you see here. At the very least, you'll know when and where your jobs are scheduled to run, and you can host this on a big screen TV for employee communication. Remember, this is all based on skills assigned to workstations or machines and skills assigned to tasks, which the standard time scheduler matches up. So consider watching both part one and part two again, give it a try yourself, and let us know how you make out.